Hallo, ja, nee. Oles lo, delia zaili. Can we sing that song together? Often as I breathe, let my whole life be a expression of your grace. Delia zaili, delia zaili. Often as I breathe, let my whole life be an expression of your grace. Yes, Lord, daily, Lord, daily as I leave. Often as I breathe, let my whole life be expression of your grace. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, Lord. Can we bless the name of the Lord? Lord, we bless you, Lord. We bless you this hour. We give you praise. We exalt you, Lord. Father, we bless your name. Can you lift this God up? Let us lift his name up. Let us lift him up. Ribo sante te leke rebo sotoria. Ramo lo zende de leke rebo bo shanda da ye. Can we welcome the Holy Spirit? Can we welcome him? Can we lift him higher? Father, we bless you, Lord. We bless your name. We exalt you, O God. Mari le zende ke rebo sotori karababababa ye. Robo Santoria, Razende de Lekere Boboye, Holy Spirit, we welcome you, Lord. Rile Zende Kere Boshanda Karababa Baba Baba Ye, Oh Ribo Santori Kariba Baba Baye, Oh Father Lord, we welcome you. Come and take your place, oh Lord. Can you ask him to take his place? Come and Take your place, so long in my life. Come and take your place in this place. Come and take. Take your place, take your place, Lord. Come and take your place, oh Lord. Can you tell him to take his place? Come and take your place, oh Lord. In our lives, come and take your place to the law. In our lives, come and take your place. Lord, take your place, Lord. Father, come and take your place, oh God. We must sante te leke rebo soto Oh, can you ask him to take his place in our hearts, oh God? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Can you ask him? Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven. Fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Can you ask him to fill your cup? That Father, this afternoon, fill our cup. I don't know where you're joining from. You might be joining outside Canada or Calgary. Can you ask him this day, Father, fill our cup, oh God. Fill our cup, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill my cup, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill my cup. Father, fill our cup. Lord, fill our cup, oh God, this afternoon. I surrender all. 
I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. 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 I surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Brethren, that's a prayer. The Father, I surrender all to you. This year, I surrender all, all my totality, oh God. I surrender all, all. I empty myself to you, Lord. I surrender all. Manle zedekere bobobo ribo soto rikarababaye into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, can you invite him? Come in today, come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. We must leke re bosondo ri karababa baba. We must sate leke re bosondo ro bobo ye. Rabo zande de le leke re bobo shanda da 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 ye. Father, we surrender all. We ask that you come into our hearts, come into our lives, O oh God. We invite you, sweet Holy Spirit, to have your way in the name of Jesus. We must re le sate leke ri baba. Oh, Father, we welcome you, Lord. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Maribo satete lekeria, ribo zondo rika rababa ba ye lekere bobo bo ye. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Apostle Lokwe, you have your hands raised up. Ribo satete lekeria, ribo shanda da 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 ye lekere bo soto rika rababa ba ye. Hallelujah. I welcome you, everyone, to our end of the month prayer meeting. Hallelujah. I welcome you all. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much. I welcome you. Hallelujah. This is Bridging the Gap Interdenominational Fellowship. Yeah, if you have been participating, joining us, we have been praying every Saturday just for 45 minutes, but this is our major program of the year and our very first major program of the year. Hallelujah. Thank you all for all who have been joining. We have been praying and laying a spiritual foundation for the new year. And we have been praying all manners of prayers since the, you know, for, since the second Saturday of the year. Thank you so much. I welcome you, Apostle Lokwe. Thank you, Minister IJ. Thank you. I also want you all to help um, help me welcome my father in the Lord. I have uh, Pastor Sonny Adeni online. Hallelujah is the guest minister for today. Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Hallelujah. And I think I saw my, my father also online. Welcome, ma. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Thank you so much, ma. And all our ministers online. Thank you all, everyone. I welcome you. Brethren, I hope you are seated very well. Well, you know, to receive what God has for us today. 
God is going to break every fallow ground in our life. Uh. The fire of God is going to enter into us. Uh. He's going to visit us mightily. And whatever is lying or oh God fallow, whatever is not every uncultivated ground, uh, every unused ground, the Lord will visit us. Uh. And the Bible says, if the foundation also be destroyed, what can the righteous do but to pray? And that is why you and I, we are here to pray that the Lord will visit every aspect of our life today in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever is hidden in our foundation, whatever is unknown to us, oh God, today the Lord will open our eyes of understanding through the word of God that the word will come expressly and will find expression in our lives in the name of Jesus. I pray that the channel of our spirit will be open up to receive the word of God in the name of Jesus, that the word will fall on in a fertile soil in our hearts today and it will germinate it will bear fruit in the name of jesus christ and so father in the name of jesus i pray that as your word come forth today that lord it will come with power it will come with oh god father lord it will come oh god with great anointing to break every yoke everything that has held anyone down captive oh god will be broken in the name of jesus christ let our eyes of understanding standing, oh God, be open in the name of Jesus. Everyone that will be ministering in one capacity or the other, I ask, oh God, that the heavens over us will be open, that no one will leave this platform the same way in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we decree and declare this meeting open in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way, oh God. We step aside for you, oh God, to have have your way, full course in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Over to you, Minister IJ. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> to um i have someone here <laughs> marvelous he's here to uh do this praise with us today this morning i welcome all of oh, us yeah. like minister wumi has said this is a new year i don't know what you're expecting this year i don't know what your business are you know some of us we do uh new year resolution like this year i said i'm not going to do new year any new year resolution because it's like a continuous that if you're doing it, it's wrong. No. But what I'm saying is that I want to keep myself accountable with the things I did previously, but I'm going to do them better. So this year, we want the Lord. We, we want to be close to the Lord. And with that, we're going to sing it as a song of proclamation telling him that we want to be close to him. We want him, as we are getting close to him, he, he will draw close to us. Father, we lift your name on high. Lift your name on high. Look, bless you, Lord. Lift your name, Jesus. We you yeah. Yeah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Yes, we worship you, Lord. You, the Lord. Yes, the Lord. You are love. The Lord. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Lay it all down again. Hear the sea without. You are my desire. Yes, you 
Nothing else can take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way to bring me back to you. There are times that it seems like we are so far away from God, but I can tell you, He is closer than you think. That situation this year, I don't know what it's been like for you, but I know that my God is close to me. Draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Never let me go. Thank you. 
I praise when I'm numbered, surrounded. Praise is the water, my end is traveling. As long as the thing makes it. I praise cause I know you're still in control. I think more than a sound. My praise is to shine. <laughs> So <laughs> I will be tired, my God is alive. How could I keep inside? I will be up, my God is alive. How could I keep inside? I will be tired, my God is alive. Keep inside. I will be tired, my God is alive. Alone, not the soul. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. I could be inside. I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? 
I won't be quiet, my God is alive. I go keep it inside. Oh, I won't be quiet, my God is alive. I will be Lord, my soul, I wouldn't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it inside, and I say I wouldn't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it inside, there is in the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, hey, hey. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. I say there is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. chain. There's a big rising now. There's a no Yes, Lord, break everything. Break every Break Hallelujah. Thank 
It's fine. I hear the shackle for me. I Thank you so much, Minister IJ. I don't know what's went wrong, but um, maybe your connection. Uh, the, we hardly could hear most part of the music. Yeah, the connection maybe was, you know, we couldn't hear, but we, we do thank you so much for the ministration. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you and increase you on all sides. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We're going to go into a thanksgiving and prayer intersection. This is uh, an intercession prayer right now for 10 minutes. Then we will invite our Father in the Lord for ministration. If you're joining us, welcome everyone for joining us. Yeah, if you're just joining us, we welcome you once again. And um, today we're laying a spiritual foundation, breaking the fallow ground in our lives in Jesus' name. And so all tight, sit well. And get ready for what God is about to do in our midst this afternoon or this evening, wherever you're joining us from. In Jesus' name. Amen. Apostle Lokwe, are you ready? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm ready. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I quickly want to say Happy New Year for the people that have not joined us in the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, we have been laying the foundation and we are laying righteous foundation. Amen. We want to salute um, our mama and papa online. Uh, Amen. Mama Amen. Fabula, Amen. Pastor Sonny, God bless you, sir. Happy New Year to you, man, sir, and to every one of us. I have Amen. a few minutes for us to pray. And you know, uh, we are breaking the family grant today. And I pray that we will not remain the same. After today's meeting, whatsoever thing that's been holding us down, whatsoever thing that the, the land that we have that we're supposed to possess, but there have been nine, nine fallow unproductive. Today, there shall be solution to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Two assignments I have the first one is to lead us in a prayer, a, a prayer of thanksgiving, and the second one concerning today's team. And you know, I love David. We love David. And that's why so many, you know, see today, we still have a tabernacle of David, the message of David, this of David, that of David. Because, you know, this year has been declared as the year of the Lord. And it's the year that we are going to pray. It's the year that we are going to study our word. And it's the year that we are going to praise the Lord. And God bless um, Mr. AJ. She says something. Sometimes we think that God is far. God is not far from us. It's just a prayer close. It's just a prayer, just one prayer. And there you are in his presence. And this year is the day here that we are going to dwell in his presence. We are going to dwell in his house all the days, all our time. We shall dwell with him. And David says something, Psalm 119, verse 164. Psalm 119, verse 164. I love it in TPT. And he said, I stop to praise you seven times a day, all because your ways are perfect. You know, this is the year that we must intentionally pray, intentionally praise uh, uh, study, you know, meditate upon his own, and we must intentionally praise him. You know, before somebody can praise God seven times in a day, you know, it means that intentionally he created time. And thank God for our phone. Maybe this is the year we need to set our alarm just for praise. You know, some of us we are allowed for different things, but this is time to set alarm to praise God. Maybe say several times a day, I praise my God because His ways are perfect. And I love it. In memory of Blessed Bashan, he says that seven times a day, I praise, I praise God for the way you keep everything running right. The way He keeps everything running right. Can we appreciate God? 
Can we take him? Because he's the one that is keeping everything running right. He's the one that is keeping everything running right. Can we appreciate him and say, Father, we thank you, Lord, because if not for you, <laughs> we cannot even undo anything. We cannot even undo ourselves. In 10 minutes, in one minute, everything has scattered. The Lord, thank you, oh Lord, because I will, we, we praise you today because you are the one that is keeping everything running right. You kept 2023 right for us. And 2024, the January is almost over. You are the one keeping everything running right. You are the one keeping my children everything running right. You are the one keeping my marriage running right. You are the one keeping my heart, my liver, my kidney, my intestine, my ear, my eyes, my teeth. You are the one keeping everything running out. Can we appreciate him? Can we say, Father, thank you, Lord, because you are the one keeping everything running out. My digestive system, my body systems in our body, this is the one keeping everything running out. I want to tell you, if just, I don't even know, just one finger. For In fact, something happened to my husband, I know he was away, and we were treating two fingers for one month. Just two fingers. And my husband was carried here like this, you know, for four months. You know, if it's just one finger, you will know that is, that is the Lord that has been keeping everything. Like, can we appreciate him? Even bridging the gap is the one that has been keeping bridging the gap running right. It's the one that has been keeping our servant leader, our mom will be running right, our family, our children. I wanted to say it again, the Lord, I acknowledge you today that you are the one that is keeping everything on here. And I want to encourage us, like David, we should be intentionally praised. We even, we cannot do seven times a day. We can do three times a day. This is the year of the Lord. It is the year of the Lord. As declared for bridging the gap, it's going to be the year that we are going to praise him in the mighty name of Jesus. And to praise God, it has to be intentionally. We have to create time to worship him. And he's ready to accept and to receive our praise. Father, we thank you, oh Lord, because on behalf of everyone on this platform today and people that we watch after, we declare that you are the one that is keeping everything on the earth. Hallelujah. And the word that the Lord has sent to us today, and um, I will quickly want to read it, and I want to read it in a native version. And it says that I... I said, plant the good seed of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plough up the hard ground of your heart. For now is the time, for now, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. So there is a time, the word of the Lord says that there is time for everything. But I want to tell you that 2024 is the year to seek the Lord. Is the year of the Lord and is the year of righteousness. Is the year to seek Him, and when we seek Him, we are going to receive the word of love and of righteousness. Can we begin to pray and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I will, I will plow up the hard ground of my heart. I love it in anything is because it refers to an art. That is the version that I talk about art. It says that plow up the hard ground of your heart, and everything is about heart, you know. Do, even before the administration, the most song that has been coming to me is a Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, and I live alone for you. That's been the song I've been singing in the last one hour. You know, it's about our heart. That Lord, today, I give you my heart, oh Lord, and I will plow up the heart of my heart in 2024. Can we pray and say, in 2024 and beyond, I will seek the Lord. It has to be shared intentionally, and we are making you know. New commitments to the Lord is not new revolution. We are making new commitments that we seek the Lord every minute, every second in our behavior, our words, our actions, and our reaction. They will seek the Lord in the name of Jesus. Can we pray again and say, I will plant the good seed of righteousness? That in 2024, I will plant the good seed of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want us to pray that I will receive my harvest of love. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will receive my harvest of love in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to also pray that in 2024, the Lord will shower righteousness on me, on my children, and on my family. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will harvest righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will plant the heart, my dear, every part of my heart that is still saying no to the Lord. To this year, I give it to you, Lord. This altar today, I surrender everything unto you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And there's this passage that's been coming, Ezekiel 36, verse 27. You see, you know, I love it so much. You remember I saw the plowing, breaking the fallow That was the first passage that came, Ezekiel 36, 26. And you see that I will remove the stone, stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that is God with and not serve with. This year is about God. He said, I will remove what? I will replace, I will remove the stone heart and I will replace it with a heart that is seeking, that is about God. God will and not serve will. I want you to pray that this year is going to be God willed. If God willing, you know, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, the last message he said, let your will be done. So shall be our desire in this year, 2024. All of us in the mighty name of Jesus. And finally, I just want us to confess. This is my confession. I've been confessing from day one and we prayed it last week. I just love it and I'll be sharing it everywhere I've been, I've been going. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 24. As I close, the book of Galatians 1 24. And it says that because of the transformation, that took place in my life, they praise God even more. I pray for all of us that because of the transformation that will take place in our lives, in our hearts, in our home, in every area, people will praise God. AKJB says that people will glorify God in me. People will see God in you. It's not, this is not praising God with you. There's a difference between praising God with you and praising God in you. Because when they see God in you in the year 2024, they will praise God with you and they will praise God in you. And that shall be our testimony and the testimony of servant leader of the Bridge the Gap that because of the transformation in 2024, in your family, concerning your home, the work of your hand, your head, and every people will praise God in you. And so shall it be for all of us in the name of Jesus. Can we appreciate God? Say, Father, we thank you because you, the answer prayer, you have asked us today. And we commit the remaining parts to the to you. We are ready to receive, and we shall receive from you in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Apostle Ope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, because of the transformation that God. God will wrought in our life in this year. People will praise God. That is your confession also in the name of Jesus, every one of us. Uh, in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you so much, Apostle Okwe, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, now we're going to welcome our Father in the Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to be leading us, teaching us the word of God. I don't know about you. The Bible says in Psalm 2, verse 8 and 9, I don't know what you want to ask. He said, ask of me, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth as your possession. You Amen. shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like potter's wear. As we go into the world, I don't know what you want to ask of the Lord. I don't know the area that is fallow in your life. I don't know that uncultivated area that unused ground. What is it that you want to bring before the Lord this hour? Can you just quickly bring them before the Lord? As our Father comes before to come and teach us the word of God. The Lord, I ask of you this hour in the name of Jesus. Is the word of the word of God. It will give us the nations as an inheritance. There's nothing impossible that God cannot release into our lives. And so, Lord, we ask, oh God, this hour in the name of Jesus for your great visitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can we all pray and ask so oh God that the Lord will anoint the tongue of his servant. Lord, as the word comes out, oh God, it will come with power. That it will come with authority in the name of Jesus Christ. That every ground, every heart, every hardness of heart as we have prayed, oh God, that hears the word, oh God, will be broken. That the Lord will circumcise our hearts and remove every stiff nakedness in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord will find the word of God will find expression this hour in the name of Jesus that everything that is not of God we can you ask the Lord father I empty myself 
fill me with your substance. As I hear your word this hour, I empty everything that is in me. And Lord, fill me with your own substance, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We commit your servants into your hands, your son, Lord. Father, we ask for power from on high. In the name of Jesus, that the word, oh God, that will make every wilderness to become a fruitful field. And the fruitful field, the forest, oh God, this hour. Father, we release it. Father, fill his mouth, oh God, with word like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Everyone, can you welcome Pastor Sonia Deni? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a great privilege to be here. And I want to thank the Almighty God who has given us the gift of life and the privilege to be on this interdenominational platform called Bridging the Gap Fellowship. Amen. And I want to thank God for the life of the saint woman, Minister Mumi Akintobi, and her husband and the entire family. Mama Fola and I love your family. And we thank God for what God is doing. You haven't seen anything yet. God will do greater things. He said, behold, I will do new things. So this year, watch out. A new level, Amen. a new fire, Amen. a new grace. Amen. is released unto you Amen. and to the work Amen. that he has called you to do. Amen. When God Amen. calls a man or a woman, he backs them up. Amen. He backs them up and he will back you up marvelously Amen. and you shall be marvelously helped in Amen. Jesus' Amen. precious name. Amen. And I want to thank Amen. Apostle Akwe Salami also and her family. We love you. Uh, Mama Fula and I love you. And thank God for your life, your fire, your zeal, your consistency and partnership with this woman of God. The Lord God, we continually bless your home Amen. and bless your life and bless your ministry. Amen. And everything he has called you to do shall be perfected by him Amen. to the glory of his name in Amen. Jesus' name. I Amen. also want to thank Mr. IJ and all the other, and our friend Marvelous who showed up. That's, a, that's an August visitor in January. And I want to thank God for your life, Marvelous. Uh, thank God for your life, Minister Hygiene, and all the other persons who God have called with this woman of God whom he has sent, that the Lord God will bless the work of your hand, bless Amen. your ministries as well, Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, our assignment here is to lay a good foundation. And I chose, I asked um, Minister Omi if I can share my screen with us because it will make it easier. We'll be able to see things ourselves and see the scripture. I've done some notes. So um, it's a teaching. So if you also want this teaching after now, I can also make it available. Hallelujah. Now, brethren, um, let's bow our heads in prayer. Holy Spirit, we are here. You are the instrument that God gave to us to prepare us, to preserve us, to keep us, and bring us to heaven. You came from heaven, and your assignment is to hold us, to keep us, to prepare us. We partner with you this afternoon. We align ourselves with you this afternoon and say, keep us, preserve us, fire us up, speak to our hearts, use us mightily, and glorify your name in our lives, Lord. We will not miss it. Mm. Jesus asked a question. He said, what shall it profit a man when you gain the whole world and lose your soul so that you and I will not lose our soul? The Holy Spirit has been given to us to partner with us. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you into the platform of our life and into this platform that you open our eyes to see the things we have never seen. You will quicken our spirit. man. You will remind us. You will show us things to come. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, brethren, we are laying a found spiritual foundation for the year 2024. And it's so important because of what the scripture says in Psalm 11 and verse 3. Look at what it says. If the foundations be destroyed, what can... Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Yes. If, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? 
And I put a side comment there. I said, a damaged foundation, what that scripture is saying, a damaged foundation cannot be repaired by even righteousness unless it is rebuilt. Now, look at houses anywhere across the globe. I don't know what the standard is and I don't care to know. Anywhere across the globe, the foundation of a building is faulty. That house has to be brought down. No matter what you do, patch it this way, move it up, do everything, you have to bring that, that building, rebuild the foundation. So even righteousness cannot repair a foundation that is destroyed. Now, I must tell us, for this year 2024, like Abraham, we have to desire to build a city that has a good foundation. That's what the Bible talks about, Abraham, that he looked for a city which out foundation, which builder and maker is God. Hey, Paul Rada, Hataria, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that in this year, 2024, you will look for a city whose that has a good foundation, whose builder and maker is God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'd like us to read uh, our text um, and the title of the message that we are looking at is Building a, a Good Foundation as the theme, but the message is itself, if we go up, it says, Breaking Up Your Fallow Ground. Breaking Up your fellow ground. Ozi and it's anchored on two scriptures, Ozi 10, 12. Look at what it says, and 1 Peter 2, 1 to 5. 2, 1 to 5. Ozi 10, 12 in King James Version says, sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up, break up, break up your fellow ground. Those are action words. It is time to seek, to seek action word, to seek the Lord till he comes and rain righteousness upon you. 1 Peter 2, 1 5 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speakings. Hmm. I'm going to tell us the importance of all of this and the meaning of each of these as we go along. Verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire, that's another action word, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones, I will tell us the meaning, are built up a spiritual house, an holy priesthood, mark those words, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, mark that word, that is acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now, brethren, in Hosea 10, 12, Prophet Hosea painted a picture of agricultural farmland. Now, the word fallow means an uncultivated ground that is unbroken, that is unplowed. Now, in agriculture, um, well, I, I looked at the Hebrew word, the pictorial word in Hebrew for fallow. It's a picture of the head of a man as well as a seed. Now, when when in, in, in Hebrew words, they, they have a way of painting what they are saying by picture. So the picture of the word fallow ground is a picture that has a seed and has the head of a man. The head means beginning. So if we put the two together, it means beginning seed. Now, what that means is for a seed, to be able to enter a fallow ground, certain actions must be taken, certain steps must be taken. Otherwise, this seed that is beginning, this seed that has life, will die. Now, the fallow ground represents what is called a state of complacency. Now, if you look at an uncultivated ground, what do you see? You see barrenness. The only thing you can see grow in a fallow ground is what is called weeds. They are not desired. To see something meaningful grow in a fallow ground, some other steps must be taken. When a field is like this, it becomes a beacon for the birds in the sky. 
The only thing that can happen is birds to fly there, pull there, and jump around and do a few gymnastics, and that's it. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice that your heart, now that fallow ground, the ground there represents our heart, that your heart will not be fallow, your heart will not be barren, your heart will not be unplowed, your heart will not be left alone the way it is. When a man gets to that point spiritually, there is an issue. I will, I will come to that. I think I'm going ahead of myself. Now, this fallow ground possesses what is called constancy. It never changes. So go year in, year out. It's the same. And I pray for somebody that this year, 2024, when things are happening around, when there's a mighty move of God, so much prophecy have gone ahead about the year 2024. So many things that God wants to do. He wants to do a new beginning. He wants to give you laughter. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you so many wonderful things this year, 2024. So be ready. But in order to be ready, that's why we're here, trying to lay a good foundation. Now, a fallow ground is safe and undisturbed. It's a picture of sleepy contentment. I don't know whether you've seen that situation before. Things are happening. Some people just are like this. They are happy the way they are. They don't want anything new. They don't want anything to happen for them. It, that's what is called sleepy contentment. They are just contented, just being docile. They are sleepy. The world is flying here, there. Nothing is moving them. They are just so complacent. I pray that nobody under the sound of my voice will be in that state this year and beyond in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, my spirit caught a picture. There's one of us here. There's complacency. You, have, you got to that stage and it wasn't your fault. It is because of the things that you have experienced from men that brought you to that state of complacency. Before this meeting is over, the Holy Ghost will address that issue and will bring you out and put you on the pedestal, on a platform, where you will shine to the glory of God in Jesus' precious name. Now, safe, it never sees the miracle of the fruit. That's what a fallow ground, what happens to a fallow ground. It's a miracle to see a seed planted into a ground and grow and then bring forth much more fruit than, in, it's a miracle. So a fallow ground is exempted by all standards from a life of fruitfulness. It doesn't see busting seed. The beauty of ripening again is far from a fallow ground. I pray that in the name of Jesus, every trap of the enemy to take anyone under the sound of my voice into that state where you are just docile, nothing is happening, no miracle. You are just the same person year in, year out by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So it knows no fruit. Why? Because it is afraid of the plow and of harrow. It doesn't want to go through. I don't want any change. Now, may I let you know, may I announce to you that the only thing that is constant in life is what is called change. Change. So you need to be moving. Even God himself moves. And changes, if you look at from the foundation of the earth up until now, the several ages and the first several dispensations we've had. Otherwise, God will have lost, lost out on the world. But no, he has a grip of it. And then he keeps changing whatever is needed to go to the next phase. You'll see that change come. I pray for somebody that in the name of Jesus, that constancy shall be broken over anyone under the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in contrast, there is a ground that is called plowed ground that allows plowing. What are the benefits? The peace is disturbed. Now, the, the peace is disturbed. It's like, no, something new is happening, so I must plunge into this. And I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, there shall be spiritual buoyancy. There shall be a spiritual bubbling in your spirit that will make things happen for you as you desire. Now, one thing about God that you must know is that if you don't seek him, you will never be found of him. No. We had a very powerful meeting last night. 
where we're talking about two ways to reach God. It's either you seek God or God seeks you. If God seeks you, that's a problem. That's a problem and you just must comply with the standard. But it's better to seek God like the way we're doing right now. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, your peace. Now, the peace being disturbed there, it's not as if you lack peace. No. It's that you are, something is happening and you are waking up to it and your spirit man is catching it. You are, you are, you are, you are not settled. You are not settled. You are not settled. Your, your spirit man is bubbly and is moving as the spirit of God is moving. Now, may I let you know that the miracle of life and begin only on a, a plowed ground. The seed shoots, and all over all the field, the hand of God is at work. You can see miracles. Now go to an agricultural ground and see what's happening. Now everywhere there is plowing, they are breaking up, they are moving soil, they are pushing it out, they are bringing in new one, they are putting water on it to soften it, they are making it, you know, fertile, they are adding some fertilizers and some, you know, ingredients that will make the seed grow. That's what is happening. I pray for somebody under the sound of my word. Now I see the Holy Ghost activating right now. In the heart of everyone under the sound of my voice, I see a bubbling going on right now. I see an activation. Please place your hand on your, on your, your heart this way. I minister to everyone under the sound of my voice that your heart will begin to bubble for God. The life of God, the way of God will flow into your heart. Every whole pack is broken right now by the authority. In the name of Jesus, there is a bubbling in your spirit that is making things happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoa! The miracles of nature always follow the plow. So what that ground? Once it is plowed and fertilizer is added, it's softened. What happens? They begin to put in seed. A fallow ground will never receive seed. But a, a plowed ground, sure, that's the ground to put seed in. Now, what are the spiritual implications of a fallow and plowed ground? The fallow ground, the man who looks like the fallow ground is satisfied with himself. And with the fruit he once carried, he will be telling you a story in 1920. Oh, this was what happened to me. Now, may I let you know that past successes are hindrances to future glories. Past successes. Yes, you keep talking about, yes, thank God it was, but it was in your past, not in your future. You need to bring it back. You need to bring it back into the future. How? by being bubbly in the spirit and seeking. Now, Monati, now, your phones, for instance, when your phone is, when you have a phone, you put it off, the first thing it does when you put it on again is scouting. Where is the signal? Which is the closest signal? And once it connects, you see a bar happen. That's how the plow ground is. It's looking. It's searching. Ah, where is this? Not the old story. Like the, the fellow that will tell you a story. Ah, you know, in 1920, I, I went for a conference and this happened. That that's the that's the that's the best they will ever see. Now, let me let you know the spirit of activity he, he once possessed is now dead. Nothing happens on the fall. In fact, a fallow ground is a dead ground, like I said in the intro. He or she is infertile. He has shut himself from God and the miracle of growth. No growth. No growth. Constancy at the same level. May I let you know, if you are the same place that you are spiritually this year, like you were last year, you are moved back. Why? Proverbs 4.18, the path of the just is as the shining light. It shines more and more. Our God is a God of more and more. You shouldn't be at the same level that you were 20 years ago. I'm be telling the story of 20 years. Enough is enough. I decree from now on, you begin to make progress and you begin to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. What happens to the followed life? No fruit. It's easily disturbed by the gates of hell with little or no resistance. May I let you know that a fallow ground is, a, is, an, is the attraction of demons and, and devils. 
It's easy for demons to, to feast on that heart. Why? On that life. Because there, there, no new experience. Nothing is new. They are just constant. They are not designed anything. It, they are easy prey for the devil. Easy prey. A, a, a followed ground is an easy prey. A followed life is an easy prey for the devil. The gates of hell, the moment they just do something, they are already caught. They live. A followed life lives in disobedience. No new, they, they are not finding out what is God saying for me this year. Let me give you this uh, hint and it will help you. There is a volume of book that is written about you in heaven. Your life is a book and it's in chapters. It's volume one, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. After five, five chapters, for instance, it goes on to volume two. That's what Jesus said. He said, he said, I have come in, in the book of Hebrews. I have come in the volume of the books that was written of me to do thy will, O God. I have come in the volume of the books. Why are you stuck? The Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody, and I don't know who it is. He said, why are you stuck in that chapter? You've been telling the same story, the same old story, no new experience. Why are you stuck in that same chapter? Have you found out from heaven, speaking by the Spirit of the Lord now, have you found out from heaven what volume and what chapter of your life you should be in? Are you experiencing God like never before? I may no, no, no. I'm not asking you for an answer, but the Holy Spirit just spoke to somebody. Now, he can that life cannot hear the voice of the Spirit? No. That life is prayerless. That life is wordless. When a life, so it's like, it's like, now have you seen a fly perch on a, a candle, for instance? What will happen to that fly? He dies immediately. The followed life is like that dead candle, potential, so much potential, but it's dead, no fire, no fire, nothing happened. So flies, insects, and all negativities of life can perch. The devil can easily identify that, 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 that life. It's engulfed by the spirit of religion, the same old way as it was. In my local dialect, one of the people say, Walati at the Goshe, Ben, no one is seen. Ben, you're seeing my city. I need my cum. I mean, do you know what that means? As it was in the beginning, so it is now, and so it will ever remain. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Neighbor, neighbor, please stretch for hands, stretch for your hands towards me. In the name of Jesus, this stretch hands. That your life will not be that constancy. I break up Pakota Lida Hateya, every hold of the enemy in any area of your life, in the name of, that has held you in that constancy. I break in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Now it's engulfed by religion. It has exhausted its oil, like the five foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25. The Bible, Jesus was telling a story. It was, it was a true thing. It was the, every story that Jesus told is about what has happened before or what will happen. Do you know before Jesus comes, there will be five foolish virgins whose oil will run out. That is a followed life. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice that your oil will not be exhausted. Think what happened to them. Oh, let's give, give us, they went to the, the wise ones. Give us some of your oil. He said, no so that it will not get to a point where it will not be enough for both of us. Go and buy. There are people who sell oil. This is the time to buy now. This is the time to buy that extra oil that you need. We are living in a world that is dark. One of the prophecies that God told me about this year is this year is getting darker like we have never seen before. It's going to get so dark we have never seen it before this year. So I'm speaking to somebody under the sound of my voice. It's a good thing you are here, that you're able to hear this and to prepare yourself. I pray for you that extra oil that will carry you through in the name of Jesus Christ shall be fully delivered to you in Jesus' name. Now, the followed life is like what happened to Demas. Look at what the Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 10. 
For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Hmm. Like Demas. Now, the Bible says he loved, why did Demas go back? He loved the present world. First John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Anyone that has the love of the world in him, the love of the Father is not in them. No. What is the love of the world? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Those are the three things that kill every believer. What your flesh wants, sleep, sleep, sleep. Oh, eat, eat, eat. Fasting is going on everywhere. Everybody is fasting. You are just eating and eating and loading yourself. As long as that's your lifestyle and giving yourself over to the lust of the flesh, the Bible says you are not loved by the Father. You, the love of the Father will be far from you. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Everything the eye can see. Oh, new shoe, new cloth. New, new, da, 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 da. Even the things you don't need, you buy them to please the people. They, the people that don't even like you, they didn't even see you. The pride of life. Oh, yes, I'm this, I'm that. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. You will, it's a trap. It's a trap. And when Satan traps people in that, he, and, and let me tell you one thing about the, the, the set, Satan himself. He's never in a hurry to catch anybody. He starts small. A little here, a little compromise here, a little this, a little this. And before you know, he creeps in. And then he shows you the big picture. I got you. I pray for anyone under the sound of my voice that is here right now. Any trap, I see somebody in a trap. I never, that's why I was screaming. Out. No, no. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, yes, that chain is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, it also happened to Alexander, the copper smith. These were associates of Paul. They loved Paul. They could remove their eyes. In fact, Paul, in one scripture, this guy said, these people could remove their eyes for me. But what happened? Between that love and the time they turned their back on Paul, they listened to wrong things. They heard wrong things. They believed wrong things. And they loved wrong things. And they gave themselves over. Let me let you know, what you give yourself to will soon catch up with you. Whatever you give yourself to, it will catch up with you. And when it catches up with you, that's it. You will have nobody to blame but yourself. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice that God will separate you from every love of the world, love of lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life in the name of Jesus Christ. What about the plowed life? What are the spiritual implications? Wow. Look at this. The plowed life is the life that opened the fence for the plow. So the land says, mm, open the door, open the gates, and then the plow comes in. Right now, I decree an opening of every gate in every heart in the name of Jesus for the plow of the Holy Ghost to come in and begin to plow on these grounds in the name of Jesus. What happened to that life? That life has allowed the plow of confession of guilt into his life. So you, there is so, let me, hmm, Kate Praha, yesterday I was teaching at a prayer meeting and I was telling the people about conscience, conscience. Now, the blood of bulls and goats, this is just a, a digression in the Old Testament, removed sin that was on the surface, but it couldn't reach the one that is hidden in the conscience. I don't have more time to talk about that, but now, listen, brethren, the plow goes in, the Holy Ghost helps you unravel the things that are inside of you. This one is wrong, that one is wrong, and then begins to correct you. The place of prayer in the life of every believer is a place of correction. It's a place where the Holy Ghost corrects you, he speaks to you, he tells you the things that are not right, the things that are not working, he corrects you, he helps you. And if you don't have an altar like that, you are on your own. Every time I come to my prayer altar, the first thing I say is, Holy Ghost, extreme me, extreme me. Extreme me now, right now. If there's anything that is wrong, remove it. And then, boom, 
the Holy Spirit comes and begins to plow and begins to remove. I pray in the name of Jesus, somebody under the sound of my voice will yield themselves to the Holy Ghost to plow through their soul and remove every guilt in Jesus' name. It has brought the soul to deep repentance. Confession of guilt that leads to repentance. Through the pressure of circumstances, the Spirit has shown the soul how barren its existence is. Now, when I come to that place of prayer sometimes, the Holy Ghost says, you are not doing enough. He wants you. And I'll tell you the role of the Holy Spirit. I'll show you the scripture. The Holy Spirit is your partner. If you leave him out of your life, you are on your own. You can't make it alone. We live in a very dark, Satan-infested world. But it takes the plow of the Holy Ghost to bring us to that place where God is helping us and we can look up to him. He said they looked unto him and their faces were not ashamed and their burdens were moved away. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. That shall be your story in Jesus' precious name. Now, the Spirit has also made him realize the cause of that infertility and his fruit, which is caused by the fruit-killing evil of materialism and that your own effort cannot give life. You cannot on your own, like I said. Without the Holy Spirit helping you, you cannot, you are on your own. You are dry. Very soon, the tree that is disconnected from its root will dry up. A branch that is disconnected from its vine will dry up. You cannot do it on your own. Were you the one who paid the, 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 the price to redeem yourself? Were you the one who paid the price to, to bring yourself out of sin and immorality? Were you the one who paid the price? No. Somebody paid the price. Go and read Isaiah chapter 53 and look at what Jesus went through. The things he suffered, the sacrifices he made, the beatings, the, and he shut his mouth. He, that was sacrifice. He had the power to speak. He spoke once. He said, whom seek ye? And everybody fell. And you want to do it on your own? No, you cannot. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, you will submit yourself to the Holy Spirit who will help you in Jesus' name. That life has an active partnership with the Holy Ghost. Look at what John 16, 13 says. But when the Spirit, the truth-given Spirit, the Passion Translation, the truth-given Spirit comes, He will unveil the reality of every truth within you. He won't speak His own message, but only what He hears from the Father. He will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. Every human mind wants to know what's, what's, what's happening tomorrow. Everybody wants to have an idea of their tomorrow. The one who can tell you is the Holy Ghost. Please engage Him actively. The reason many people go after false prophets is they want to know tomorrow. And then the false prophets see that loophole and then season on them and then mess them up. I pray you will not be messed up. The Holy Ghost can tell. He told me. He tells me what will happen for time. He tells me what will happen. This year, for instance, he gave me a, 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 dose, a, a, a big volume of what's going to be happening this year. He told me everything. He can tell you. It's just that you have not cultivated enough relationship with him. You don't have a relationship with him. And that's why you're on your own. Now, this life has the fire of God on their altar. Leviticus, the, the book of Leviticus tells us in verse chapter 6 that the priest must burn wood on that altar every morning. So the fire of God, Ebo Hashalika, comes and engulfs that life. The life is obedient to the heavenly call. You know per time what God, what chapter, what volume, where am I in the agenda of God for my life? Where am I? If you think what you heard 20 years ago is still relevant today, no, no, sir. No, ma'am. You're on your own. Go on. Ask him. Call to me and the Holy Ghost is going to be helping us. I'll be praying. We're going to be praying. And somebody will be brought to that place where the fire of God will fall afresh on your altar. Where every dross and everything will be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' precious name. Now, that uh, cloud life is revived, is renewed, is restored, is refired. It's a no-go area for the devil. The devil knows who to go after. There is a mark on everyone that tells the devil, this one, no, don't go near. Don't you ever go near. You'll be burnt. And he knows. He sees the fire of God sitting on your head. And he, he avoids you. 
I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that God's glory will rest upon you. Now, that marked life is marked. It's preserved. It's untouchable by the devil. Now, let me show you this thing. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible says, We know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, keepeth himself, Keep it himself, underline that word, and that wicked one touches him not. If you don't keep yourself, the devil will touch you. But when you keep yourself, how? By the word, you will not be touched by the devil. Jesus said, that evil one came to look. He found nothing in me, so he left him alone. He left him alone. So you need to keep yourself for the Holy Ghost to keep you. Jude one twenty four. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. God can keep you. The Holy Ghost can keep you from falling. And to present you, he will package you. When you have an active partnership with the Holy Ghost, he will tell you what's going, what's not going, what's good, what's not good. He will quicken you. He will present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. That's his job. That's why he said he came from heaven to take you back to heaven. The Holy Ghost came from heaven, descended. You remember on the day of Pentecost, he came from heaven. He came down and he stayed with us. He's the only one on earth right now. And his work is to take us. Look at what Ephesians 4.30 says. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. In other words, he will take you there. If heaven is your goal, if you are not Amen. To live here on earth and stay here on this earth, the Holy Ghost will take you. He will, on the day of redemption, rapture is happening. The Holy Ghost is the, the one that will make remove every weight and make you fly. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice that you will not grieve the Holy Spirit. You will have an active partnership with him and he will lay and take you there. Now, six things as we five things as we wrap up. How do we lay a good foundation for this year? Number one, be broken. Who's it tend to break up your fallow ground? Say, break up the fallow ground. Allow the spirit plow to go through your heart. Repent. Circumcise your heart. Make a radical break with the old. You used to live a certain way. Break it. Break away from the life, the old life of sin. Break away. When sin is found in a man, the Satan will not let you go. He, you have his property. He will come for it. He will come knocking on your door. He will disturb your sleep. He will disturb you at night. He will portray you. He will pursue you everywhere because you carry his thing. Jeremiah 4, 3 to 4, look at what it says. But thus said the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground, so not among tongues, circumcise your heart, yourselves, yourselves to the Lord. Take away the first things of your heart. You see, there's a drought on your heart. There's a covering on your heart. You need to cut it open. You need to do it. Not your, Nobody will do it for you. You cut it and say, no, I, I break up. I tear this first thing of my heart. Isaiah 55, 6 to 7. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. There is a time to seek. This is time. This morning, this afternoon, this wherever, or night, wherever we are in any part of the world that we're joining from. Now is that time. Look at what Isaiah 55, 6 says. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake. Nobody will forsake for you. Nobody will do it for you. You have to do it yourself. Forsake his ways. Forsake his way, and the unrighteous man is taught, take control of your thoughts. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, 6 tells us, he said, I'm bringing every thought, taking every thought captive, I'm bringing it to the knowledge of Jesus. Introduce your thought to Jesus. Let your, let your mind think Jesus. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is so let them here return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. God is a merciful God. And to God, he will abundantly pardon. And look at what David said in Psalm 51. He said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. When you are broken, oh Lord, I'm sorry. I know I did wrong. <laughs> I know I went wrong. Lord, I'm sorry. When you come to that state, you know, there was a, there's a difference between the brokenness of Judas and the brokenness of Peter. The brokenness of Judas was just broken because he felt he did the wrong thing. But the brokenness of Peter was the one that came with godly sorrow and it leads to repentance. Judas did not have godly sorrow. He was only sorry because he felt, oh, I let down the master. No, 
That was his, he wanted money. Oh, and at the end of the day, I got the money, but nothing to do with it. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice that as we pray right now, we're going to be praying soon. The fire of heaven will come on your heart. We burn off every dross, dross and we bring out that heart and we'll make it plowed and make it available for the spirit of the Lord to use in Jesus. And look at it, it said, verse 17, the sacrifice you desire is a book. That's what God is calling for. A sacrifice is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. No. Verse Seven. Okay, now I was showing it in three different versions. One is King James. Look at it in NLT. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. Look at it in TPT. The fountain of your pleasure is the sacrifice of my shattered heart before you plowed heart. You will not despise my tenderness as I humbly bow at your feet. So we're going to pray very soon. Number two, way. To lay a good foundation is lay aside. What does the word lay aside mean? Break away from and depart from all these inwardly things. Do not let yourself be tempted and condemn it directly when you notice that one of the things arise in you. What are those things? Mention four things there. Malice. What is malice? Oh, I won't talk to him. And this is found mostly among ladies. I'm sorry to say that. Most ladies keep malice. There's something in their heart they won't tell you. They will tell you another story. They will lie to you. That's malice. Girl, gossip. Girl, girl is deception. Hey, actually, that's not what I mean. That you are a liar. You are a liar. As long as you remain like that, let me let you know you are not a plowed ground. No, girl is deception. You deceive and deceive. And you, you have two faces. One face is showing like this, and the other one inside. Hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? Living hypocritical life. Deceptive life. Meaning to say black, but you put on white. Envy. Now, let me show you. I, I, I kept some notes here. Look at what James 3.16 says about envy. He said, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every work. You cannot escape evil work if you live in envy. You envy somebody. Now, the fact that somebody is blessed does not mean you will not be blessed. No. The blessing of somebody cannot prevent your own blessing. Your own blessing is come. Your time is come. It's just a matter of time. So rejoice. Rejoice with others. And all evil speakings, gossip. Oh, did you see this? Did you see? And manipulations. You gossip what you don't know. You assume, make assumptions. This afternoon, by the fire of the Holy Ghost that is coming down from heaven, I declare that all of these things shall be wiped away. Just make yourself available. He's able to cleanse. Number three way, number three way to lay a good foundation is what is called desire. Well, I look, that word is heavy. It's an action word. It means to crave and hunger like a newborn baby. Have you seen a newborn baby who wants milk? It will give you indication. The hands will be up. Everything will be the mouth to be moving, everything. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to pray, desire, be animated. Let the Holy Ghost animate us. You do not have to encourage a baby to drink. Is that right? He naturally gives a sign for that food. The food of the believer is pure milk. Sincere milk, the Bible calls it, sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. I pray for somebody that's in the name of Jesus. And you know, you can't eat candy. Give a child candy, and that candy will make the child grow. No? So stop feeding on candy. It is good, but it will make you grow. It is good. It is good to hear what's happening out there. Oh, what's this? That what that that that. Hey, nana, and every news in town, you want it. That's candy. You won't grow. You will not grow thereby. Number four. Live in your uniqueness as a lively stone. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, describes every believer as lively stones. Have you seen two stones that are ever the same? No, they, they don't have the same shape because they cut them from the quarry and the process of cutting them, you know, you can't cut them exactly the same. Two stones. So that's why the Bible calls you a lively stone. You are meant to build to build the kingdom. Look at what the Bible talks about says that in Matthew 6, seek it first. The kingdom of heaven, God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. 
that your uniqueness, bring your flavor to the world. The world is waiting for your manifestation. The Bible says the earnest, earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestations of the sons, the daughters of God. You were created unique. Bring your flavor. Don't look at somebody and want to be like them. No, be your own, in your own path. There is a gifting, there is a color, there is a, a radiation around you that God wants the world to see. And this year, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we pray right now, the Holy Ghost will bring out that flavor in Jesus' precious name. And lastly, live as a holy priesthood. Now, let me show the note there. It said, Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. See, holiness is so very important to your being a ground, a plowed ground that God will use. Holiness, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You won't experience the manifestation of the Lord if you live in the same way you lived last year, you know, and all the terrible things happening around you. Now, I must let us know sacrifice. He said, live as holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Look at what the Bible says about that. In Psalm 50, I, I brought three versions. Verse 5, in King James, he said, gather my saints to me that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those are the people who are gathered to God. If you are not living a life of sacrifice, God does not know you. The language of the spirit is sacrifice. If you cannot lay your life on, on the altar and say, Lord, this is a sacrifice. I live, the only thing that makes your life an altar is what is called sacrifice in a covenant form. Consistently, consistently pursuing God, pressing the spirit. Look at it in NLT. Bring my faithful people to me. Those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. If your life is not a sacrificial one, you are joking. You are, you, are, you are just immature in the faith. You are just elementary. And it doesn't take you any, any far. Look at it in the Passion Translation. Gather all my lovers, my godly ones, whose hearts are one with me. Those who have entered into holy covenant by sacrifices upon the altar. So you become an altar unto God when you can do your live your life in a covenant sense, sacrificially, consistent. That's what God wants you to do this year. And I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice that the Lord will help us marvelously in Jesus' name. I'm sorry, I think I've shot over time, my time by one minute. Do I still have time to lead us in the three prayer sessions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to be praying. Number one is prayer of repentance. I know you are godly. I know you are holy, but please, let's do this. Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant. I want you to repent right now. Let's bow our heads and pray. And say, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I repent. I turn away. I've heard your word. I believe your word. Particularly that person I said was caught by reason of what you experienced in the past. Trauma, you were traumatized in the past and that trauma is still trailing you but you can re repent right now. You can come to God, say, Lord, I come to you. Let's lift up our hands and pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, all of us, I come to you this year, 2024, in a desire to lay God the foundation. I repent, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I messed up. Forgive me. This year, I'm ready to build it anew with you. Help me by the power of the Holy Spirit. And NATO, Rabbi, you will not reject a broken spirit. If my heart is broken right now. I heard your word. The hammer of your word has broken my heart. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me. I come to the place of repentance. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Number two prayer very quickly is forgiveness and mercy. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. So every morning opens with a new chapter of mercy. Looking for who to forgive. So let's go to the throne of grace right now. And say, Lord, I lash on to the mercy that opened up today. And I say, Lord, cleanse me. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus wipe my heart. Purify my heart now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I submit myself to you, Holy Spirit, for cleansing, for purging, for purification in Jesus' precious name. Last prayer, as we round up right now, is prayer of breaking up the fallow ground. 
may I let you know how is fallow ground broken? By hammer, you can break a ground. Or number two, by threshing instrument. That's what is called threshing, sharp threshing instrument. May I give you the good news that we, we have all of them available here. Jeremiah 23, 29. It's not my word like as a fire, say the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock. If the hammer can break the rock, it can break a fallow ground. So in the name of Jesus Christ, Hermano Haria Tagalabida, Ketila Tirana, Manina no la hotalia redegadada. Asilate, that heart that is traumatized. Reporter, now let me, let me read the second scripture. Isaiah 41, 15 and 16. Look at what it says. Behold, I will make you a new sharp, new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away and the wild wind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord shall, shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. So by the leading of the Holy Ghost right now, I may not know that anyone that is traumatized under the sound of my voice that has lived for so long as a fallow ground. Now lift up your hands. Now me now do I stretch forth my hands in your direction now. And I ask the assistance of the Holy Ghost, my, our personal assistant, to go now. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the Holy Ghost has grabbed a hand. Yes, I see another hand grabbed. Yes, I minister by the Holy Ghost right now. And I say, every follower in this life are broken. By the hammer of the word of God, that can never we apply the hammer of the word. We apply the sharp threshing instrument that he has made us. Now we begin to plow. We plow every heart that is saying, Lord, yes, I'm ready. We plow the heart in the spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, the plowing is happening right now. And there's animation in the spirit. The Holy Ghost is working on this heart. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Come on, oh, whoa. The Abosha, it is done. It is done to the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Congratulations. The Lord bless you. And uh, once again, thank you, Minister Omi, for having me here. God bless you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you all, but I have been blessed. I have been watered, blessed, rejoicing here. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Can we stretch forth our hands to our Father in the Lord? Can we just bless him? He has indeed watered us. Can we just ask the Lord to bless him for us, sir? That the Lord will bless him. Brethren, the word that has, he is on fire. This is the word I, Wednesday Bible study, Sunday service in our church. You know, the word comes out with power, with authority. Can you ask the Lord that in this new year, the word in our church is our light has come. My light has come. That is the light will shine brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will carry him on his eagle's wings. In the name of Jesus, he will not be weary, he will not be tired. That the word of God, oh God, will come like a dew to refresh every ears that hears. In the name of Jesus Christ, that the word will come out with power to heal the sick. Oh, to deliver the oppressed in the name of Jesus Christ. To save the lost in Jesus' name. That the Lord will uphold him with his right hand of righteousness. He will go from strength to strength, from power to power, from grace to grace. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not been written in the heart of men, in him and through him in this year, 2024, and beyond that the Lord will do it. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. The word will never cease from your mouth, sir. In the name of Jesus, sir. Father, we thank you. Thank oh, you, Lord. Lord, we bless you for the grace of God upon your servant, oh God. Oh, go from grace to grace, sir. In Jesus' name, more anointing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We are really blessed. And I've been having so much people sending text messages. They want the um the uh the message, the notes, sir. Okay. So I will so that I will forward it to people. I'll send it out to you. 
So yes. I will uh, people, I will send text messages, send your email address to me, and I will forward the message once I have it. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have been really blessed. There were a couple of things that caught my attention, and we're just going to round up with it. He said that the uh, father in the Lord said the miracle of life can only happen on a plowed ground. Miracle of life. Life can only happen. That which is written in the volume of book concerning us can only happen on a plowed ground. And the plot, you know, and he also said, a fallow ground is an easy prey for the devil. Hey, you said you need to keep yourself for the Holy Ghost to keep you. So if you are not connected with the one that is going to keep you, then there cannot be any miracle of life. There cannot be anything. And the word that came to me was in John 15. You know, when you are not connected to the vine, there's no way you can bear fruit. There's no way life cannot come. Hallelujah. There's nothing. You cannot be fruitful. And so today, this hour, wherever you're joining from, and you, I want us to begin to ask the Lord, you, if you're not connected to the vine, if you're not connected to Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with him, there's no way you can have that miracle of life. There's no way the Holy Spirit can keep you. You can only just, you will do things by yourself, by your own self. You, you cannot go to that next level that he has for you. The things in the volume of book concerning you, there's no way you can, you, you, you will even know how to ask of it. Because he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart from you, but you shall meditate on it. If you look at all the, 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 the if you look at the slide, you know, the characteristics of a plowed ground must be somebody who is studying the word, somebody who is prayerful, somebody who is obedient to the heavenly father. And he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart from you and I, hallelujah. So you must be connected to that vine because that's where he begins to tell you the next chapter of your life. He begins to tell you the things to do, the don'ts and the do's, everything, his promises, what, where he wants you to go, what he wants you to do, who he wants you to talk to, what are the things you are not supposed to do. The things that we even do that we're not, it will chastise you is through his word. Hallelujah. And so can we ask for that grace this year to study like never before. The Father release that grace unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Release the grace. I hope somebody is praying. The Bible also says in Leviticus 6 verse 12, he said the priest, what do they do every day? They add wood, fresh wood to the fire. That is already burning. Can you ask for that fresh wood? And that is the word of God. It's daily, it's fresh. The Lord release the grace to study your word. So uh, they have fresh wood. You cannot go, you know, you cannot go. Yesterday's uh, word cannot sustain today. And it's a daily word you have. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from us. We shall meditate on it day and night, every single day. Fresh wood, Father, we receive that fresh wood. This hour in the name of Jesus Christ, can we ask that the Lord will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire in the name of Jesus, and that the hand of the Lord will lift us up. All things are passed away in the name of Jesus, to break off from every old ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you ask the Lord, Father, build me up together. Build me up, oh God, as a living stone, oh God, that is built up, that is only and acceptable, so that I can come, oh God, to offer a living and acceptable sacrifice before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. We give you praise, glory, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word that has come powerfully today. Thank you, Jesus. I believe none of us is living the same way we came. We thank God for every word of knowledge that has come. I hope you received it, Father, and we will come back to testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for every shackle that has been broken, every yoke that has been broken. Father, we bless you. We give you glory, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. I just feel like our Father should just keep, you know, just keep praying and speaking, have more time to just keep, you know, just because of our time, just keep.
teaching us and teaching us more and more. I was really blessed. Hallelujah. You need to keep yourself for the Holy Ghost to keep you. I was writing, there's so many things I wrote down, even from just listening, hearing, but time will not. We're going to be using all some of those things to pray as we go in the year. In the name of Jesus, is the year of the Lord, is the year to connect with the Lord, hallelujah. To connect so that our light will shine, so that God will, you know, will showcase us this year like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am, Mama Fola. Thank you so much. Thank you, Apostle Lokwe. Thank you, Minister IJ. All our ministers online, thank you so much for joining and all our participants. And also on Facebook, there are people, you know, on Facebook that are connected with us. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate your presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our next uh, meeting will be the second Friday in February. We will be exploring the year of the Lord. What it means to be, you know, for God to reveal himself, the different aspects of the Lord in this year. He's the lamb and also is the lion of the tribe of Judah. You know, he's the one that blesses also. And also he does not condone sin. He wants us to live a life that is pleasing unto him. And so we'll be looking at the various things, the various ways, aspects of our God, characteristics of who God is in this year so that we can live that life that is pleasing and so that he can rain down righteousness and his blessings upon us this year and so that the world we will be you know we will be the 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 the, the talk of town in the name of jesus people will see and say wow you know this is the, the the doing of the lord and it is marvelous in our sight in jesus name amen and amen shall we share the grace together in fellowship hallelujah may the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness will be with us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The name of the Lord is a sweet power. The righteousness of God is received and we are saved. Because we are the righteousness of God. God and we are saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us. The Lord keep Amen. us. The Lord Amen. make his face to shine upon us. The Lord Amen. make us unto us and lift up the light of his countenance upon us Amen. and give us peace. Peace in our spirit, peace in our soul, peace in our mind, peace in our home, in our children, peace in the land where we all live, in our communities, in the nations uh, that we all reside in, in the name of Jesus. Most especially, we pray for peace of Jerusalem and our border. Let there be peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. And see you next month in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shalom. Bless.